platforms here. Today I'm doing Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And I just want to make sure that I'm up everywhere because sometimes one goes up and the other ones don't. So let's reload YouTube here. It looks like Facebook's up, Instagram's up. Let's see, YouTube, YouTube, where are we? YouTube look like looks like it's up and running. Anyway, I am your lawyer, Patrick McGinn, and I am your best friend at your worst time. Uh, Friday, I posted a video about updates from Miami-Dade and Broward County courts. Since, well, they extended the suspension procedures and the operations, the normal operations, I guess, until the middle of April. But yesterday on the 6th, the Supreme Court, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court in Florida came out with a new order. And this new order extends his previously previous order suspending uh, most actions except the essential actions until May 29th. And in criminal cases, it suspends speedy trials till the close of business on June 1st. Um, it's pretty much similar to the orders that were previously issued. And for the data Broward County orders, when I repost this as a edited video, I will post the link to the video containing the date and Broward orders up top in a card. This order encourages from the Supreme Court, this order encourages the courts to move along with operating under um, Zoom tech or conferencing technology and setting hearings related or setting hearings that they are capable to set via audio and visual communications. Um, it gives the judges in a different circuit, the chief judges in a different circuits, leeway to institute rules for video conferencing on hearings, swearing in of witnesses remotely. It gives us some guidelines on that, but most importantly related to family law cases. We get guidance that's similar to the date and Broward orders as far as time sharing goes, but let me start in the beginning of the family law section here in the Supreme Court order. All right, for family law forms, family law forms are not required to be notarized now by the deputy clerks, that's suspended. If the filer, and this is the key, if the filer includes the following statement before the filer's signature. So if you're, what this means is if you wanna file a divorce action, a paternity action, a modification or anything like that in any county in Florida, you don't have to go out and find a notary anymore before you can submit those forms. You can sign up on the court's e-filing system for electronic filing and file your papers, but you're gonna to have to modify your family law forms and put this in before the signature. It says under penalties of perjury, I declare that I have read this document and the facts stated in it are true. So instead of going around looking for a notary, because you're not gonna get a notary unless you get one that does online notary or comes to your house or is able to meet up with you because nobody's doing notary services. And that was an issue a few days ago with a client I had and we set her up with a mobile notary. It applies to all family law forms except settlement agreements for dissolution of marriage um, with children, with property, but no dependent children simplified dissolutions and other family law forms that transfer ownership of property, which is important because the final judgment can also transfer the ownership of real estate, vehicles, any other type of real property. Therefore, it still has to be notarized. And the section on, on time sharing is very similar to the date in Broward, <coughs> Broward order. It deals with chapter 39 time sharing first, which is dependency actions. And then it gets into regular time sharing. For this time sharing, the time sharing, it deals with our independency actions and it gives some guidance to DCF case. So if you have a dependency action pending, where you have time sharing with your kids, it can still go on if it's feasible. 
It uh, it authorizes. It has a provision to authorize parent and child time sharing, uh, sibling visitation, visitation between children and other family members and non relatives. Uh, it can take place on a case by case basis determined by the circuit court in the jurisdiction where it is. The reinstatement of in-person time sharing may be ordered if the court determines that it will not jeopardize the health, safety, and well-being of the children and adults. Preferred means, although telephonic contact is permitted if video communications is not feasible. Nothing is in this, nothing in these provisions regarding visitation for children under the prospective supervision of DCF overrides existing circuit court administrative orders to the extent that those orders are not in conflict with these orders. So if you have a dependency case and your children have been um, placed in a home by DCF, you can exercise time sharing. And that's about it. We covered speedy trial. Speedy trial is suspended and traffic violations until June 1st. Let's just go through this order and see if there's anything else in here real quick. Yeah, all of the essential things that we mentioned before and all of the videos are going, or yeah, and all of the other videos are going forward. Um, there's some information on arrests for warrants out of other jurisdictions in Florida and that procedure on it. But other than that, Everything stays the same, but it goes until May 29th. So what does that mean for your case? Well, cases are, they're trying to move cases along. I checked on a divisional judge the other day in Miami Dade County on her procedure sheet, and it did indicate that they would be doing hearings via Zoom, and they would be emailing out Zoom links and Zoom notifications for those hearings. So make sure you're, you're signed up and they have your email address if you have a family law case pending. If you're represented by counsel on a family law case, of course, they'll already have that going on and their attorney should notice you. But if you're representing yourself, make sure you have your email on all the court forms so that the court knows how to get a hold of you. That's it as far as updates. I got some other information related to our stay-at-home order, which... A lot of us are under in various different jurisdictions and states. And uh, some of the things that are going on that I learned during this is if you look, if you want to take online classes, Harvard University is offering online classes. You see here, like 60 some online classes. 60 classes of various topics. I'll post a link to those in the description down below. These classes are free. Um, it has some contract law, but it has some other, you know, other interesting classes. I'm going to take a couple. And if you get on there and you take a couple because they're free, you may as well. Um, you know, it's got some JavaScript programming classes, mobile app development classes, gaming development, a bunch of computer classes a bunch of religion classes. I'm just skimming through them here real quick. Anyway, it's a pretty good selection of classes and, and they are all free. And if you take them, let me know and we'll do like a round table on Zoom and we'll all talk about our time at Harvard, how we all went to Harvard. Anyway, uh, the University of, let me get over here. Florida Atlantic University is offering a free online certificate in hospitality and tourism management. So if you're in that field and you want a free certificate, regularly costs $900. Let me see what it says here. FAU is one of the top 30 schools for hospitality programs. So if you want to extend your education or develop your education and skills in hospitality, and tourism management, Florida Atlantic is your place. Uh, you have, if you have the time, classes begin April 9th. They're all, it's all online and it's free. I'll put the link in the description down below. Let me check my notes here. As far as arrest statistics go in Miami-Dade County on April 6th, which is the latest they had, 
they had 48 bookings. And, you know, for a county that runs around 200 plus bookings per day, 48 bookings is a substantial decrease and their daily releases their daily releases are pretty much equaling equaling or exceeding the daily bookings so criminal cases are down really really far with the exception of domestic violence domestic violence is is spiking at the moment we've got a bunch of domestic violence calls and we can usually track through our office and speaking with other lawyers um, when domestic violence spikes, and it is certainly spiking at the moment. All right, so if, if you found anything interesting to do while we're all on this stay away, stay at home order under the stay at home order, and you know, you're bored out of your mind, that'll give you some things to do. Um, some of the things I'm doing, maybe they'll help you. Um, I don't know, just some ideas that I have that I've been doing to keep busy. Apart from the uh, from the legal work I'm doing, because you can only you, know, you can only practice law so many hours in a day before you get bored out of your mind and you got to do other stuff. Um, I'm doing a lot of journaling. I think this is an interesting time in our history, and I want to be able to go back. I've always done journaling, but I want to go be able to go back and look, you know, years from now or in the future, look back and see what was going on during this time. This is, you know, a time that, in, at least in modern history, we have not experienced anything like this. And I think the more notes you take about how you're feeling and what you're doing day to day will be beneficial down the road. Uh, like I said, I'm going to sign up for a couple of those classes. For, I signed up for one already. I'm going to sign up for another one of those classes for Harvard. And I would love to sit around with a bunch of people that took those classes so we could all talk about how we went to Harvard together. I think that would be uh, a lot of fun. So um, upgrading your skills, uh, furthering your education. I think you, if you have downtime during this time, you should use it for your own benefit. Uh, you know, that's what I'm doing. I think, you know, it's a good idea. It'll keep you busy. Uh, get a hold of those projects and knock out those projects you've been meaning to do. I spent some considerable time over the weekend cleaning the garage and my garage is now spotting you know, spick and span, and I can actually find my tools when I'm looking for them. Uh, managing stress. Um, I, have, I have kind of a strange way of managing stress. For those of you who didn't know, I used to be a homicide detective. So I was constantly working, going out and call outs in the middle of the night, um, investigating terrible cases, seeing terrible things that happen to uh, other human beings and dealing with the interdepartmental stress, which is probably the most stress that comes down from the upper management of police departments because the people that actually go out and enforce the law and do real police work are usually a lot of times in conflict with the management ideas and they drop a lot of stress down on you as any policeman could probably tell you. So one of the things I do for stress management is A, I journal and B, I list, I make lists, I take a legal pad when I feel stressed out or if I feel bummed out and I'll start making a list of everything that's good. And eventually, you know, by the time I get to page two, I'm usually turned around, I'm feeling a lot better and I can get on with, you know, other productive things. But when you're under stress, you're not gonna be productive. You're gonna be dwelling on those issues that, you know, you're repetitively, for me, it gets to a point where thoughts are coming in and out of my brain so fast, I can't process them. And then writing them down and stuff slows them down and it gets me back on track. That's something that works for me. You may want to give it a try. I'm just trying to, to do my part to help help other people out because, you know, we are all in this together. This only works if all of us work together. And, you know, hopefully we'll be out of this soon and we can look back and everything will be will be just fine and dandy. But when, I don't know. Um, a lot of the talk here, at least in the legal profession in Miami, is this stuff could go on into midsummer or late summer. Um, I just set a case in Broward County on Friday. I set a trial date for August. It was supposed to go to trial Friday. They called me um, a couple days beforehand because of the courts were closed. I expected it would be continued, but the trial date was, I got was late August. So, you know, who knows when this is 
this is finally going to end and what what the outcome is going to be and how long it's going to take to get through those backlogs. Um, I try to keep my productive productivity level up every day. I'm big on making lists, the to-do list, of things I have to do in the law of practice for the next day. I'll do that at night before I go to bed. Um, it was crazy last week. You know, I'm sure other people experience this. My sleep patterns were like off the charts all over the place. One morning I was waking up at 5.30. Some days I was sleeping until 10 o'clock. I couldn't sleep at night. I'd fall asleep early. So I've been working on that since the weekend to get that leveled out and having various you know, levels of success at that. But I think it's important to maintain a routine, at least it is for me. If I can maintain a routine where I'm up at a certain time every day, I'm working at the home office for X number of hours every day or every other day and doing something and blocking those times and doing block scheduling through my day for both work activities and personal activities that I want to get done. It works wonders for me. It may work wonders for you. Uh, I always try to be productive. You know, when I sometimes when you're sitting at the desk and you're sitting there and you just you just can't type out another word, I'll stop for a few minutes. I'll go into another room. I'll break out the list and I'll go. Okay, here's my productivity for today. Here's what I wanna. Here's what I've accomplished. Here's what I wanna accomplish, and I'll see which of those I can work on and actually get accomplished. Works for me. Um, you know, I try to do these videos as much as possible whenever there's a court update or some type of information that comes in or something interesting comes in or an interesting case. I will uh, I'll usually make a video about it or a topic. I'll usually make a video about it because in there somewhere, you know, somebody may have a question on that topic. So I'm always trying to provide value to other people, you know, to their benefit. And it comes back around. To, you know, to you when you when you help other people out, it comes back around to you through good karma anyway. And I've, that's something I practice all my life. And one of the things that, that's helped me in the last maybe two weeks or so is I just quit watching the network news. I quit watching the news. I quit listening to it on the radio all the time because it just gets so overwhelming. It is insane, and it feeds in to that stress level and to that um, insecurity about the future and all that craziness so i just i just had to cut it out otherwise i'd be sitting there watching the news all the time because i'm one of those people that i get drawn in when i when i watch tv and stuff especially the news and i can just sit there and watch it over and over you just have to make i just have to make a conscious effort to stop doing that um my some other local news here in miami miami beach is instituting a mask ordinance where you have to wear a facial mask or cloth on your face whenever you go into a business and i believe it also covers the employees but it certainly covers the guests so just be aware of that anybody living on the beach or going to be for some essential reason because you can only move around for essential reasons uh, we covered arrests already You know, try to, what I try to do is I try to, I try to not get inwardly focused. I try to maintain my focus outwardly. I find that my production levels go up when I do that. I'm able, I feel a lot better. I'm able to get a lot more accomplished. And I just, you know, focus on the exterior and focus on the good thing, on the good things. You know, everybody's going through this. It's affecting everybody at one level or another. Some people are having a really tough time. Um, some people are bored out of their minds. Some people are in the middle or whatever. But wherever you're at, if you're in the lower spectrum or you're having a hard time, just try to concentrate on what's going good. Um, I went to check the mail yesterday down at the office. It usually takes me about an hour to get to my office. It took 20 minutes. Parking was easy. It was a breeze. Traffic was like a Sunday morning. And this was like um, Monday morning at maybe 10 o'clock or so. Traffic was really light. You, know, you just try to focus on the positive. I'm here. I'm getting to read a, a lot of my books that I have in my bookshelf that I haven't been able to get time to read. I'm knocking out things that I've been putting off and I've been procrastinating on. And it just makes you feel better. It makes me feel better when I get stuff accomplished. So I just try to keep that in mind, focus on the positive, And it just, it just works wonders for me. Let me look and see if there's any questions popping up. I don't see any outstanding questions on anything. Hey, Betsy, how are you? 
Hey, Puddin' and Pie, how are you? Looks like everybody here, everybody checked in on LinkedIn. Nobody on YouTube yet. And I got Cindy and Betsy on Facebook. Maybe you can share with me your productivity schedule structure for your day. Thank you. I do block scheduling. So I'll just, I'll take a legal pad and, you know, I'll decide what time I'm going to start work on a particular day. Like I don't always start work at eight or nine o'clock in the morning, especially with the stay at home stuff, you know, these stay at home orders. Um, I've been starting, you know, at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock and whatever. And I'll just, I'll just block my days and I'll go down a legal pad or you can use a, um, a calendar or your calendar on the computer or whatever. And I'll block a section of timeout. So like today I did a motion for contempt and a counter petition in a case. So I blocked in some other research, some other case law research on that case. So I blocked out a two hour section. So at 10 o'clock I started and at 12 o'clock I stopped. And when I do my block scheduling, if I get to like 12 o'clock and I'm not done, I'll go ahead and stop for a while because I have times later in the day that I can use for catch up. Like I'll block off a half hour here and a half hour there to catch up on the stuff that I didn't actually finish during the block schedule. So maybe between, and then when that block is done, maybe between noon and 1230, I will, you know, eat lunch between 1230 and two o'clock. I'll do whatever. I did a couple of seminars today. I did a seminar on uh, lawyer marketing and the, and the corona, coronavirus crisis. And then after that, at two o'clock, I did a seminar on domestic violence homicide investigations. So I've been, you know, doing that stuff along with the online classes, and I just block all those according to the schedule. And then at some point during the day, I figure out how much I, I'm going to work on like legal matters. And when I reach that time, unless there's an emergency coming in, I will stop working on those matters, and I will, you know, do the things that I enjoy: read, read a book do this, do that scheduling for tomorrow or whatever it is. And I just do it by blocks. It's a very simple process. I, I was some, taught that when I was in homicide um, because our time, our time was so crazy there. And, you know, the, the length of time that you would actually be working compared to the time you were off was significantly more than like the average person who works 40 hours a week. And somebody taught me the block scheduling um, program or the block scheduling whatever you call it and i started doing the block scheduling and it helped me a lot it helped me in the stress level it helped me keep better track of my cases because there you're managing a significantly a significant number of cases and tasks as compared to now um, i do a whole lot less work now than i did then so i i was able to bring that in and adapt it to the law practice and uh, use it to be more productive there. Two blocks a day, you think? Two, two hour blocks a day? Yeah, I mean, you could do that. It's whatever, you know, whatever the level of work you have compared to what you, what else you want to get done that day. I try to, I try to balance it. You know, I don't, I don't sit there and block out 10 hours just to do legal work. I may block out two hours to do legal work, one hour to do something else, 30 minutes to eat or whatever, 45 minutes to eat an hour. And then maybe another hour or two of legal work or whatever. And then when you get to when you get to where you've decided that you're done working, you know, professionally for the day, that's when your leisure time activities come in, the reading the books and stuff like that. But I found block block scheduling has worked wonders for me ever since I've been a homicide detective. And I found it was one of the only ways that I could keep up with the cases that I was working on then. And it also helped me when I was in when I was an undergrad because I was still in homicide when I was an undergrad and I was going to class. I was, I was taking a full time load of classes, so I had to be able to manage that and block scheduling is what got me through those last two years of undergrad. And then I used it in law school for studying and you know going to class and stuff like that. And then I adapted it to the law practice. And it's worked really, really, really well. Anyway, that looks like it. That's all the information I have. Of course, if you have any questions, you can always email them to me or DM me on any of the platforms. I am on Instagram as the Magic City Lawyer. TikTok is the Magic City Lawyer. Um, Tumblr and Snapchat, Magic City Lawyer. I'm on LinkedIn as Patrick McGeehan. 
If you just search my name, you'll find me there. On Facebook, you can find me in two places. I am on my business page, the Law Offices of Patrick McGeehan, as well as a private group that I have, Ask a Florida Divorce Lawyer. It's a membership group, so you have to request membership, and then I'll approve you, and you'll get in there. And I post a lot of information there related to family law actions. And then I post all my my content on the various platforms. I also have a YouTube channel, which is where this video will be posted. When it's rendered, it'll be posted at your South Florida lawyer, Patrick McGeehan. That's me. I am your best friend at your worst time and all that. Anyway, if you put in Patrick McGeehan, you'll, you'll find my YouTube when you search for it. But you have to put McGeehan because as soon as you put Patrick, the first thing that comes up is Patrick Mahomes. And I can't throw a football that well. So you got to put in the McGeehan part to get to my to my uh, YouTube page. And you're certainly welcome to um, subscribe to my page and a lot of the videos, a lot of the longer videos in my podcast, which I do on Wednesdays, comes out on YouTube. I usually do YouTube live for my podcast every week along with one or two other platforms. But I'm active on all those platforms. You're welcome to follow me on all of them. Um, you can DM me questions on all of them, and I'm usually pretty good about responding to my DMs. You can email me at patrick at PJM Lawyers, likewise. Or if you want to call the office, my number's on all those platforms. Feel free to call the office. Also, if you want to get the weekly updates, you can sign up for my um, newsletter. I send out video newsletters every week, and people seem to love them. So if you want to sign up for that, feel free. Go to my webpage, pjmlawyer.com. Look at the bottom, and there's a uh, newsletter sign-up sheet you could sign up for. Also, if you are going through a family law case and money's tight, and I know especially now money is going to be really tight, and you know, we realize, us lawyers realize that a lot of family law people are self-represented. But if you need some guidance and you need some help in that area, as far as the financial disclosures go, or if you hire a lawyer and you just want to try to save yourself on attorney's fees, if you look at my Twitter account, which is at PJ McGeehan Law, the very first tweet that's pinned on there is a cheat sheet, ebook, whatever you want to call it, on how to save money on attorney's fees. Read through it. The client I've developed that program a couple of years ago. My clients that use it love it. They've all saved money. Some of them don't like to use it, and we do everything for them. But you know, some of the other clients like to use it. And they all said they they have saved money and time and aggravation, and most of all, they saved a lot of stress. Um, you guys are welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy, for coming in and. Betsy and everybody else on Instagram. You guys are great. I'm very humble that you guys take time out of your day to watch me, especially when I pop up like I did here and uh, just give a few words out talking about, can you be arrested for violating the stay at home orders and can the police stop you and all that stuff related to that. So if you're interested in that, feel free to check in tomorrow night at 6 PM Eastern and I will be there until then. Remember sign up for your Harvard class because we all need to sit around on zoom or something and talk about how we all went to Harvard together. I think that would be an absolute blast. Have a good day. We're all in this together. We'll all get through it together. And I think in the end, we'll all be better off going forward. Everybody's under stress. Be kind and be careful. Stay healthy.